Hello everyone. I'm Microsoft Sven. Today I will be discussing an overview of these screens of death and error messages people have experienced over the years, not including the error messages that I read. Those are reserved for my main error series. Now, before I get onto those errors themselves, let me give an explanation in how those error messages work, and how they inform of the user when they encounter a problem. In many computer operating systems, a special error message would display on screen when the computer has encountered a fatal error. The computer uses messages on those screens of death, as these typically result in unsaved work being lost, and indicate serious problems in hardware and software. Screens of death are usually the result of a kernel panic, though it's not always the case in some certain circumstances. Most screens of death would display a solid colored background, along with the message informing the user of what's wrong with the system, sometimes prompting them to reboot the computer. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Starting with the blue screens of death, these obviously need no introduction, as everyone knows what those are. This is a pretty common error to get, as this occurs when an operating system has reached a state where it can no longer run safely, due to either a fatal system error, or when infected with most malware. There are different versions of the BSOD, but it only varies with different versions of Windows. What you're seeing here is the most famous version of the BSOD, which is typically displayed in the 9X series. Now, I'm not gonna show you all BSODs, oh, because I wanna be quick about those as possible. Fast forward to Windows 10, you can now see a couple of changes made for the BSOD. This particular version can now also restart itself automatically, after it has encountered a serious problem, among other things. But the most prevalent feature that has caught my eye is this frowny emoticon that's displayed here, emphasizing the fact that BSODs are really bad to get. As a person, I see this BSOD as a minor inconvenience whenever I get this one. However, I usually break into laughter when Grandpa experiences a BSOD himself, usually it's the most inconvenient of circumstances. But as a character, I absolutely hate this error with a passion, especially when I get that really obnoxious courage virus. Overall, the blue screen of death is an archetypical representation of what screens of death are, so it's no secret why some people will rage at this very screen they are displayed with, especially when they are playing a video game of theirs. A completely different PSOD, the black screen of death is actually pretty rare, as this only displays in the screen when a DOS program has failed to execute properly, forcing the user to reboot their computer. Apart from the white flashing cursor, this black screen is completely blank, ooh, how ominous. This black screen also appeared in later versions of Windows up to 8, when the hard drive is unable to load the master boot record for the operating system, due to a critical system file being missing, which forces the user to reinstall Windows. I said this was rare, is, because my Windows 10 Hewlett Packard laptop that I got for Christmas never failed to load the OS for me, as of yet. But this will eventually happen, because hard drives eventually can fail. Another reason, why I said it's rare to me, is, because one of Grandpa's older computers experienced a failure in its hard drive, rendering it unable to boot the computer, as far as I could recall. However, in earlier builds of Windows 8, he used to have a black screen informing the user of a fatal system error, until it was changed to the familiar blue in the retail versions of it. Red screens of death, that I am about to show you, are pretty interesting to discuss about, as they refer to different problems in different platforms. At the time of this video, we now finally have information on this new RSOD that actually occurred in earlier versions of Windows 98, specifically Memphis, as this is 98's code name. It's actually very rare, as this particular red screen is caused by a serious problem in the ACPI system. Also, it's very similar to the BSOD we all know, but instead the background color is red, thus justifying its RSOD designation. This RSOD in earlier beta builds of Vista, specifically Longhorn, is actually rather uncommon, as this displays when critical system files failed to load properly. It also indicated that Vista failed to boot properly, as evidenced by this header that reads, Windows Boot Manager has experienced a problem. Bollocks. I never experienced any problems, because I'm the almighty goddamn Microsoft Sam. Your computer is the one that experienced a problem instead. This next red screen is actually really rare, and this screen was displayed in users who own NVIDIA GeForce GTX 680 graphics cards. 
This red screen appears when a conflicting diagnostic program that has not been updated tried to read the card's video flash BIOS. It's mainly a hardware issue, as the diagnostic program had to alter the card's register to read the image in the BIOS. At worst, this NVIDIA red screen of death will even force the user who owns the card to reinstall Windows, as the diagnostics can also conflict with some of the other drivers when trying to read the GTX 680's BIOS. This problem, with proper knowledge, can be fixable by installing a new driver that actually has support for GTX 680's register, so diagnostics can alter its BIOS to read the image without issue. The Xbox 360 red screen happens to be extremely rare, as I haven't seen this anywhere at all. It's just like the red screen that's displayed in PCs with GTX 680 graphics cards, except I assume that the Xbox's GPU has died all of a sudden, when that person was playing Need for Speed Most Wanted. Normally GPUs won't die all of a sudden in Xbox 360 units, as they are carefully designed to not break down all that easily during operation. I cannot be too sure about GPU failures in the slim versions or even the Xbox One, but I bet that these failures are very unlikely to happen, so that's why I said those occurrences are extremely rare. This particular red screen, obviously from the PlayStation 2, is by far the most famous and common of the red screens of death, far more common than even the Xbox 360's own, especially. The RSOD also appears on the original PlayStation console, though that red screen is not as famous. This red screen would display, when you obviously put an unreadable disc, such as Xbox or GameCube, in the machine itself. What you'll get is a pretty intimidating error message that tells you to put in a disc in the correct format, such as the first two PlayStation consoles, along with a pretty distorted version of the normal startup sound. You can obviously tell that it does not accept incompatible formats, apart from DVDs. No wonder why this red screen garnered a rather fearful reputation, especially when they played that console when they were children. One side note that I like to add. Red screens also existed in the PlayStation 3 and the PSP. Both of those, however, are rather rare and I had a hard time trying to track them down, so I'm not gonna show them. However, we have another red screen we're gonna look at, and with the power of animation, we are presented with this. The Atari Jaguar's red screen of death. This one is a pretty common issue for a so-called 64-bit console, because this one would display when there's a cartridge load error. When this happens, it would start up as normal, along with the growl of the aforementioned Jaguar, but after the animation, the black background would then suddenly turn red. It was supposed to display the game over text underneath the logo, but since it's not present in the original video featuring this red screen in action, I'll show those words for you. Here is what should have looked like. This last red screen is actually a browser-specific error message that appears when Google Chrome encountered a security error when surfing the web. It also appears on WordPress. This one is somewhat rare, as I actively avoid visiting malicious sites that'll actually fuck up my computer. However, this red screen is far from perfect, as this can pop up when I visit certain sites that aren't at all malicious. It obviously says the site ahead contains harmful programs. Bitch, your website malware scanning algorithms contain harmful programs instead. We're gonna be taking a small break from screens of death for a moment, as Google Chrome also has its own errors in mind. Let's take a dive into the Chrome errors, shall we? This is one of Chrome's error messages that I don't see often, and actually never really wanted to see in the first place. This message was displayed when a web page has failed to load properly, and thus has been killed, resulting in this horrid error message you see here. It also featured a sad tab icon, an homage to the sad Mac, but that's just me getting ahead of myself. It obviously reads, a snap. Fucking cringy bullshit. That is a very normy and cartoonish response to a potentially annoying error that makes you want to blow your brains out. Unbearable. This next error message is what I see most of the time, whenever I'm trying to visit a site that is somehow unreachable. It could mean different things, and there could be different reasons why this message would pop up right onto your face. The most common reason being no internet connection, but that reason is not very consistent at all, so it's not very helpful. It obviously says, this site can't be reached. Of course bitch this site is definitely reachable, so this error is goddamn pointless. This is another error message that I see most of the time, after I have switched to using the Ethernet cable. 
It obviously appears when your internet connection was interrupted due to a sudden switch between networks. It says your connection was interrupted. A network change was detected. Bitch, you don't even have to tell me that. I can get my internet back whenever I want to. This error was rather annoying to get, and that's not saying much. This error message is what I mostly see all the time when the internet connection was either really slow or non-existent. This message is extremely annoying to the point of even being unbearably infuriating to look at, because obviously your internet connection all of a sudden went kaput on you. There could be different reasons why you have no internet, and it could be that there's something wrong with your router. It obviously says there is no internet connection. Hot diggity bull diddly fucking shit. I would simply turn my router back on and I would get back into surfing the internet. What? Still no internet connection? That does it. I'm gonna contact my internet service provider about this bullshit I'm experiencing. It really makes me want to blow my brains out over this extremely annoying error message. This next Chrome error message is rather uncommon, as this message is very similar to the security error red screen of death that I previously discussed, except it's not as serious. It says, your connection is not private. What do you mean my connection is not private? You're obviously being rather hypocritical there, because you block me from certain sites that aren't malicious to begin with, yet there are hundreds of sites out there that actually contain viruses through fake downloads, and they stay up without penalty. Fortunately there is an option, where you can access the site anyway under advanced, though I wouldn't really recommend that, if there is some phishing going on, with a ph. This error message is actually extremely annoying, and this appears every time Chrome was improperly shut down. You can get this message by forcibly terminating Chrome itself, via task manager, or when Windows crashes on you without warning, which by then you have to open Chrome back up. When this appears, it asks the user to restore the pages to how they were before the crash. It asks, restore pages? Chrome didn't shut down correctly. Stop lying to me, Chrome. I'm getting real sick and tired of you rubbing your bullshit message onto my face every time after Windows crashes on me, usually it's the absolute fucking inconvenient of circumstances. Jesus Christ, this error is as ancient of a joke as my talking like a lady. Shut the fuck up, Sam. I'm getting real sick and tired of you saying I talk like a lady, and don't, ever, dare, call me, a lady boy, asshole. What the hell, Mike? I'm only saying that to the audience here. Plus, I'm currently doing a video about screens of death and other error messages people experience over the years. Now leave me in peace for crying out loud. Humph, fine. But if you ever dare call me a lady boy from your filthy mouth I... will... fucking... murder you. Yeah right. You can't murder a fellow Microsoft voice, because I'm your brother. Now leave me in peace. Phew, now that crazy psycho is con. Now then, where was I? Oh yes, I have one more error message we'll look at, before we get back into the screens of death. This last error message isn't actually a message at all, because we all know that Chrome really despises Flash applications, so there's no secret why Flash is going away in late 2020. It's actually pretty common, because whenever you try to run Flash, or when there are games that run on Flash, Chrome will make any attempt to block it from running, preventing you from playing old Flash games. It kind of sucks, because I used to play all sorts of Flash games on Shockwave, or in the good old days of Cartoon Network. One thing I like to add, is that in older versions of Chrome, when the Flash plugin crashes, it would actually display a sad jigsaw puzzle piece icon, when it happens, but even that is no more. Now, with those Chrome errors done and out of the way, we'll get back onto those screens of death. However, if you feel like I forgot some, please let me know in the comments so I'll discuss more of them in the future. Without further ado, let's trudge along. Yagodabaswa. There are actually two purple screens of death I'll discuss about, but let's start with the more well-known one. People who use VMware ESXi's virtual emulators will be presented with this screen, if the VM kernel catches a machine check exception. In other words, if it encounters an error, where it could no longer run safely due to severe data memory loss, a purple diagnostic screen would pop up, along with displaying information that can be used for debugging purposes. While overwhelmingly difficult to understand at first, it can actually be pretty helpful, as all this information would provide the user some help for troubleshooting, at the time of the crash. Haven't encountered a purple screen myself, because obviously, I don't use VMware myself. The second purple screen can also be seen on Roku Media Players, when there's a really loose or bad HDMI connection between it and the TV monitor. 
However, I used to have my Amazon Fire TV stick, so that's pretty ironic. It would display the message, HTCP unauthorized. Bitch, don't pull off that no unauthorized personnel bullshit on me, because you are not Black Mesa for Christ's sake. I believe this problem is relatively easy to manage, as all you have to do is to make sure that your HDMI connection is tight. And once everything's all good, Roku would run normally, so this purple screen isn't much of an issue. The green screen of death is most commonly seen on Xbox consoles, unlike its red GPU failure screen, and most TiVo DVR units. This one is from the TiVo itself, and it says, the DVR has detected a serious problem and is now attempting to fix it. This will take about 3 hours. Please do not unplug or restart the DVR. If you have a plasma DVR are concerned about image burn-in, you should turn off your TV for the next 3 hours. If, after 3 hours, the DVR does not restart, please call customer support. Actually, this error message is much more helpful than most others that I got, as it actually provides details about the problem to the user, while giving him or her advice to troubleshoot for what's causing this. I'm not sure if that green screen would still be here on your TiVos, but I bet that the screen was most likely either changed or phased out, I don't know. There's also a green screen of death in insider builds of Windows. I'm not even kidding, there actually is a literally green version of the familiar BSOD we're already familiar with. The only difference is that when this pops up, it will start with your Windows Insider build, instead of your PC. The reason for this is because Insider builds have errors that are caused by instability of developmental features that aren't normally encountered like you do on normal retail versions of it. Because I do not have access to any insider bills, I consider this particular green screen as very rare. The gray screen of death is a pretty hard one for me to track down, as, as far as I know, this occurs when the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES, is encountering a problem, mainly due to a cartridge load error. Haven't got much information about how the gray screen works, because I haven't owned an NES myself. If you have any more information, let me know in the comments. The white screen of death is most commonly encountered in portable devices such as smartphones or tablets, and this occurs when a phone has locked up due to being dropped too often, a hardware component failing, or when it has encountered problems updating. Most of the time you'll see a blank white screen. However, in other cases, a white screen would display, along with the Apple logo, as is the case with the iPod or the iPhone. It also appears on WordPress browsers, though it'll also happen on other browsers, and I think this is a pretty common error to get. The white screen is displayed when a web page is becoming unresponsive to load properly, and it gets killed by the host server, due to exhaustion at the memory limit. The yellow screen of death is actually very rare, as I don't see this particular screen of death anywhere. It's primarily encountered by people who use ASP.NET as their primary coding program to create websites. It displays when the app itself encounters an error and then crashes, either due to the code being mistyped or when there's an invalid element, configure modifier. I have no experience in coding, in before Microsoft Sam fails at coding, but it could be that ASP.NET's YSOD could be the result of invalid usage of the custom errors config in web.config. There's also a sort of a YSOD in Mozilla Firefox, though I'm not gonna show that. The orange screen of death is a rather new one for me but this one also happens to be very rare. It was displayed in Nintendo Switch units, when there's a sort of glitch in the console's hardware. Unlike most screens of death, this OSOD is actually one of the easiest problems to fix. All you had to do is to hold the power button, which by then it'll shut itself off, before you could turn it back on. After that, the switch would run like it normally should. However, this error only applies to switches that were released on launch day, so that's why I said this was rare. There's also this white dialog box, or white box of doom, as some people call it, and it displays on screen when either explorer.exe has been corrupted, the computer's out of memory, or in case of Windows 3.1, a program performs an illegal action. If explorer.exe fails to load, it will tell you to reinstall Windows. If it's from memory, it will tell you to remove certain programs, or if it's given from an illegal action, clicking OK will simply terminate that said program. This one is extremely rare, as most people do need to conserve computer memory and programs they download are usually the legit one they get. 
Another reason why I said it's extremely rare is because this only occurs on Windows 3.1, 95 and 98, which adds to its rarity, given the fact that those said OSs aren't supported for a very long time. Okay, now we are starting to set foot onto Mac territory. What you're seeing here is the standard Mac OS kernel panic, which is basically Apple's idea of Microsoft's blue screen of death. However, like the BSOD itself, the kernel panic has some changes over the years, after the entire system has been rewritten from the ground up. Originally it used to spit out log information about the problem it has experienced. However, that garbled information wasn't all that helpful to most users, so Apple had simplified the kernel panic to make it easier to understand, and that's how the kernel panic remained that way. When this happens, it was displayed when the system itself has reached a state that has become so unstable that it crashes on itself, leaving you no choice but to reboot the Mac. There could be a ton of different reasons why the system would slow down and crash, and it could be a number of things, such as thrashing, deadlock, not the Battlestar Galactica game, overflows or corrupted data. I'm not gonna go through all kernel panics, oh, so, if you wanted to learn more about kernel panics, you can check Computer Clan's video about the Mac errors, and I recommend watching the most updated version of the video. Now let's take a step back for a moment to look at the classic Mac errors, starting with this sad Mac. This was introduced with the original Macintosh, and this occurs when it experiences a startup failure. It also occurs alongside the associated death chime, which varies from each different Mac computer before Mac OS X. This one is pretty common, because you can even deliberately trigger a sad Mac error by pressing the programmer's key, also known as the interrupt key. A sad Mac will also occur if you try to access the debugging console on startup. There are different death chimes that can be heard in different Mac computers, but the death chime I picked for this video is from the Quadra 840B, which was also heard during some transitions on some MSM videos made by other people, especially Samjo404. So here's the death chime. Also introduced in the original Mac was this bomb error. This error was also common, as this would typically display if a system has encountered a fatal error and needs to shut down. Kind of similar to the dialog box from the 9X series, right? It also contained a restart button that you can click on, and if you're lucky enough, the system would actually reboot by itself. However, this is not always the case. The bomb also appeared in TOS based Atari ST systems, except this time they re displayed in a row, indicating a critical system error. When this happens, a number of bombs will be displayed to indicate a different type of error, and the 8-bit counter in those ST systems will have it display up to 256 individual bombs in the screen. As shown here, there are 4 bombs in the screen, indicating that the system has performed an illegal instruction. Earlier versions instead have those bombs displayed as mushroom clouds, but this was quickly changed, because they think it's politically incorrect. In earlier iPod models, if there is a severe and recoverable hard drive error, or when something is wrong with its hardware or firmware, they will have their own sad icon similar to the one in older generation Mac computers, but instead it shows an icon of an iPod. However, some person came up with a stupid idea of fixing a sad iPod error by slapping it on the back to get it working again. Bollocks. I would never slap my iPod like that. I almost forgot that Linux also has a kernel panic of its own. This is because Mac and Linux are both based off of the Unix kernel. Here, it's having boot up problems due to the fact that its operating system has installed updates, which somehow also changes its kernel with each updated version of Ubuntu, resulting in this particular system having two different kernels, one of them causing a kernel panic, because one of them was having some problems. This kernel panic would also happen if the initializer has been killed, and the initializer is what runs all the processes in Linux. So, when the initializer has been terminated, then Linux can't run, so that's why kernel panics can also happen on that platform as well. For earlier versions of Amiga systems, if they encounter some sort of software error, users will be presented with this Guru Meditation error, which is nothing more than a red flashing dialog box. Amiga users are prompted to reboot the system or access the debugging console by clicking on either the left or the right mouse button respectively. Much lesser known guru meditations would also appear on other software systems such as Varnish or VirtualBox. The system shutdown error would be displayed in Windows XP, Vista or later, depending on what circumstances it has been given. 
Here, this error was displayed, because the Windows XP machine was scheduled to shut down by the user. When this happens, you are given only one minute to save your work, before the system shuts itself down. In this case, scheduling a daily shutdown isn't necessarily a bad thing, because that action has been done by the user. However, it can become rather scary, if Windows XP has a program, such as host server or RPC service protocol being terminated unexpectedly, and victims of the blaster and sasser worms, when they were around would be presented with this. Briefly getting back into consoles, the Red Rim of Death would apply to Xbox consoles, especially the Xbox 360. When this happens, one or more quadrants of the ring would flash to indicate different errors. Here, three out of the four quadrants were flashing red, indicating general hardware failure. This is the most common error that Xbox players would rage at and demolish that poor unit like idiotic roid raged morons, all, because one or more components have went kaput. One quadrant would also flash red for hardware failure, though it would point out to only one hardware component that's failing. Two quadrants means that the console is overheating, while all four quadrants, basically the entire ring, would mean that the AV cable has either not been connected or is damaged. Similar to the red ring itself, the PlayStation 3 also has a blinking light of its own to convey hardware issues. Also known as the yellow light of death, what happens is that it would blink yellow to indicate that something was wrong with your PS3's internal components. So basically, this yellow light may mean hardware failure. However, this yellow light of death is not nearly as well known as the red ring seen on the Xbox 360. Well, even digital distribution services like Steam will have critical errors, like this one shown here. This is a very annoying error to get, as this message was displayed when Steam obviously failed to go online to update. It obviously says, Steam needs to be online to update. Please confirm your network connection and try again. Bollocks. I'm still connected to the internet, so why tell me that bullshit message? This is absolutely pointless. Moral of the story, you're better off staying connected to the internet, if you want to surf the web. The PlayStation 4's blue light of death is basically a successor to the PS3's yellow light of death. Normally, when you power on the PS4 unit, the power indicator would start flashing blue for a few seconds up to half a minute. This would normally indicate a check-in for any software systems, and if these systems are accounted for, then the PS4 would power on like usual. However, in some cases, the blue light would keep on blinking indefinitely, until you turn the console off. It could mean different things, with the most common reason being hardware failure, especially, if its APU came off loose from its soldered joints in its motherboard, causing a bad connection. This is easily fixable in the original console, like I have with me, but not in the Slim or Pro models unfortunately. This next error is obviously a joke, and it says, the operation completed successfully. Need I say more? This error is just basically contradicting itself. I'm gonna be skipping this. Don't even want to forget everybody's favorite annoying spinning beach ball of death. Also known as a weight cursor, this appears when an application is rather busy loading. This can be rather annoying for Mac users, as they see the spinning beach ball as a sign that the page they are trying to get into is starting to become unresponsive, and they would often give up on that doomed page they are too impatient to visit. I don't necessarily think that this beach ball was the cause of this kind of computer rage. Last, but certainly not least, we're gonna be taking a look at the kill screen, the one that affects arcade games, not Toy Pop's fake idea of a kill screen. A kill screen happens when the player reaches a 256 level, and when that happens, a lot of bizarre and unpredictable behaviors can ensue, due to a software bug, because the 8-bit counter cannot go up that high. The most famous example of a kill screen can be observed from the original Pac-Man game, because at the 256th level, it would display garbled output into causing render issues on half of the map. The level is still playable, but it's rendered in such a way that there are not enough pellets to advance. This reason for this is because of an integer overflow, because like I said, the 8-bit counter cannot go up that high. Well that's all I have time for today. If you feel like I'm missing some things, or, if you want to correct me in certain things, because I'm very certain that I got some things wrong when I discussed some of the errors, please let me know in the comments. Criticism is very much appreciated. I hope you enjoyed my overview of screens of death and other errors, and until next time, I'll see you later.